Hello everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, we're gonna learn how to create these simple looping loading circles in Adobe After Effects. To begin, we're just gonna create a new composition. I'm gonna use a 1920 by 1080, just default widescreen, for example, but you can use whatever you want. And I'm also gonna go to Layer, New, Solid, and bring in a black background, just so we have something to work against. Let's start with a simple animation so we can just learn about looping and some of the keyframe expressions. So I'm gonna to go to Layer, New, Shape Layer, and I'll click and drag out a circle. I'll hold Shift to make sure it's a perfect circle. And also one thing when you're dragging out any shapes, just like in Photoshop, if you hold Command, you can drag from the center rather than the corner. Just another workflow tip for you. And I'm gonna make my circle about this big. Now, however your circle comes out, I was working with the layer size earlier. If we head up here to the Fill and Stroke, Let's set it back to a default white circle. So for the fill, I'm actually gonna click on the letters where it says fill and change it to a solid, but this is also something to note. You have the options to make it transparent, solid, gradients, so that can be pretty cool. I'm gonna make it a solid white circle. And then for the stroke, I'm gonna to go to that same menu and make it disabled for now. So we just have a basic circle to work with. And just for aesthetic purposes, I'm gonna to go to the align section on the right-hand side and center it horizontally and vertically so we're working with it right in the middle. Now let's make a simple animation with the circle by making it shrink and expand in size. So if you head over to the shape layer in your composition, find the transform section of it and drop down that arrow. Here's where we'll find the scale controls and let's click that stopwatch icon to add keyframes at the beginning. And right here at the very beginning, I wanna make it start at 0%, so nothing. And then, Let's just go to about two seconds. If you wanna find the exact, wow, I'm good, I got it exactly, but if you ever wanna type in a amount, like two or three seconds, you can type it in right here so you can get to the exact section that you want. And at two seconds, I'm gonna make it go back up to 100. And then at four seconds, I'm going to make it go back to zero. So if we did that right, we should see three little keyframe diamonds and we're gonna make this circle go expand and shrink. Now another quick tip, that looks a little static, a little linear. If I highlight all these keyframes and set the keyframe assistant to easy ease, you'll see the shape of those diamonds change and this will just ease in and out of the positions. So it'll slightly decelerate and accelerate as it comes to the ends. If you ever wanna switch it back, another tip is hold command and just click on the keyframes because there's actually no option to set them back to linear in this keyframe assistant section. So that part's pretty simple enough, but how do I make it so this one animation that I did one time can continue going on over and over without having to add 100 keyframes? That's where a simple expression will come in handy. So let's go back to that stopwatch icon. This time hold option and click on it and it'll allow us to add an expression, which is kind of like some code that we can tell After Effects. One useful thing is if you hit this little play arrow, After Effects already provides you with a bunch of useful expressions so you don't have to memorize them all the time or know exactly if this is a capital or case sensitive thing. So if we head to the property section, we can find one called loop out. And this will just loop out from the last keyframe everything that we've done over and over. So first it'll do what we tell it to do and then it'll just keep looping that over and over. So now we have this pulsating or breathing circle, pretty cool. And by layering things like this, you can quickly start to get complex animations with simple building blocks. So for example, let me just take that shape layer we just made, I'll Command C, copy it, and Command V, paste it on top of itself. And I'm just going to stagger this one two seconds. So I'm gonna open up the transform section and see these keyframes. I wanna make this one start at an opposite section of that one. So I'm gonna just click this blue block here and move it over. So I can see now this middle keyframe is exactly at the start. Now it looks like it's pulsating, but a cool trick is if I change this to 50% opacity, let's make them both 75 actually. Let's make this 75 and 75%. Now we have this cool breathing dot that kind of turns into an optical illusion because you can't tell if it's coming or going. Now that's the basic building blocks, but 
let's create another one with a little bit more colorful and some stroked circles like you saw in the beginning example. And I'm going to start over with another new shape layer. So layer, new shape layer, create another circle. And this time we will use some of those stroke options to make just a ring rather than a circle. So turn the fill to none, turn the stroke to a color, and you can choose the size or thickness of it. I uh, will go to the align section as usual, center it. So this time we're gonna bring some effects in the mix. I'm gonna go to the effects panel on the right hand side and search for one called radial wipe. You should find it in the transition section and I'll click and drag this onto the shape layer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is keyframe the transition completeness. So I'm gonna click that stopwatch icon. Let's start at zero. Let's go to two seconds, set it to 100% at two seconds. And then on this third keyframe, I'll make it zero. So we've got 100 to zero to 100. So instead of going clockwise, I want it to wrap back around counterclockwise. So I'm gonna to have to add some keyframes on this other control for the direction of the wipe. So at the beginning, we want it to be clockwise. And then a cool way that we can make the keyframes perfectly aligned without having to do the same timing every time is just opening up the section where you see the keyframe, clicking this little arrow, it'll go exactly to and from the keyframes. So I can go to the middle one, change it to counterclockwise at this point. And very important, make sure you do all three so that when, when we loop it, things don't get messed up. So I'll turn this back to clockwise at this point. So here we have closing and opening, but we've done a cool switch from counter to clockwise. Now we're gonna do the same thing that we did in the first example and hold option to add that expression on the keyframe and then find our loop out expression. And I'm gonna add that to both the wipe and the transition completeness. So property loop out. And now if I play that and we did it correctly, it should just continue looping in this kind of hypnotizing way that also might look a little more tricky than it is. Kind of like those um, kinetic, you know what I'm talking about. Now I'm gonna add one last layer of complexity to this and constantly be swirling the angle. So for this one, rather than looping, I'm just gonna add a simple time expression that we can utilize. And I'm gonna hold option, click on that stopwatch icon, and just use time and multiply it by, we're gonna change it for each layer of the ring. So for this first one, let's make it go somewhat fast. Let's make it 180. That means every one second, it's gonna go 180 degrees, which means that every two seconds, this will have rotated one full rotation. So we can see it comes to a full rotation right at the end of that other animation. So all these animations are working together and we can use all the work we've done in this layer to simply layer it by just copying and pasting and changing a few things. So on your duplicate layer, let's drop down the transform sections and decrease the scale to wherever you want the position to be. Let's also change the color of this one so you can use a multiple different colors. And let's change the time of this one as well. So under that start angle, you wanna find that expression and let's make this one go slightly slower. Let's make it go continually slower as it gets closer to the middle. So let's say it only finishes 90 degrees, half as fast on this second ring. So that's where, where we're gonna to start to get some cool staggering where this one's at the top and this one's here we're gonna get some cool differences in position. So if I do this a couple more times, we get a really intricate looking animation that was really pretty simple to make. So here's a finished result with four different rings. And I think it looks pretty cool, it looks pretty solid. You could always add more effects, more blending styles, and really take this whatever direction you like. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it below. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Subscribe to my channel here on YouTube if you're not yet so you don't miss any of my new videos. And go follow me on social media, at Show on Instagram and Twitter if you want to best reach out to me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.